Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Monday, the 10th of May. All right, now just having a look at uh, where that, uh, where the US dollar is at the start, or well, not the start, so I should say near the mid to end part of the Asian session for Monday. Now we've seen the dollar is on its knees, and this is basically coming directly from the non farm payrolls, right? So the uh, Metastock, not, not doing us any favors, by the way, with, with the Reuters poll. So if you've got Metastock, make sure you drop them a line and complain about their uh, the idea of them pulling the data. Now, the poll was estimated at 978,000, right? So if you put 978 in here and then you put the 266 in against it, you can start to see how disappointing those numbers were, right? And the prior month's numbers, 916, were revised down to 770. So all of a sudden, we've got a really big recoil on the growth of employment in the US. Now, this, this really blows out the prospect for higher rates and uh, really sets the dollar on a downward spiral, right? So this is going to be quite big because we've got, I mentioned this last week, we've got coming into Wednesday's um, trading, we've got the US CPI numbers. Now, if they come out particularly weak as well, it confirms Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman's view on, um, you know, where, where the labor force was. He said it was hu hugely under... Uh, utilized or I can't remember his, his exact words, but it was basically that we're nowhere near capacity, right? So that tells us that the numbers, the good numbers that we've been seeing in the US economy, you know, maybe should have short term or seasonal as the Fed was suggesting. Um, and that the, you know, the US economy is going to take a lot longer to get going, right? So this has really put the cat amongst the pigeons now. On Friday, leading up to the US non-farm payrolls, I was saying, we just want something to work with, either really strong numbers or really weak numbers. Well, we've got the weak, weaker version, and you can see the damage here on the dollar pairs, okay? And I'll show you the dollar CAD numbers, the Canadian numbers. The Canadian employment numbers were exceptionally, well, not exceptionally, but pretty close to exceptionally weak, um, but the overriding dominance of the dollar has sort of crushed any move for, for a bounce to the top side. And dollar cat is still moving to the downside. Oil back at 65 bucks is going to help that. So weaker dollar, what does that give us? Well, it gives us a strong euro, a really much stronger sterling. There's still this euphoria of, of economic growth in the UK, even though they haven't really turned everything on yet. So I think they're getting ahead of themselves, but it's up. And there is also prospects of another Scottish referendum. So that uh, hasn't really come into play yet. I guess they're saving that for a, um, a day where it's quite boring and then they'll bring that news into play. But uh, Aussie, Kiwi, everything's shooting back to the top side on this dollar setup. Now, if you missed Friday's data, right, and you missed the opportunity or you sort of just wanted to, to avoid the volatility, well, you set up quite nicely for uh, Wednesday's CPI numbers, right? It's going to be a situation where we get strong CPI, it counter countermeasures this, uh, the non-farm payrolls, and we see the dollar bounce, right? Uh, and you see the other pairs drift back into their ranges. Now, that's what we've been seeing with a lot of the data over the last six months to a year, I guess. It doesn't seem like we can never get the connection. If we get weak CPI numbers now, you can see the dollar index sitting around 90. This thing could really take a pummeling, right? I'm talking not just a couple of hundred points. I think with weak CPI on the back of really weak, uh, much weaker non-farm payrolls, we'll see these uh, currencies up, you know, go for that sort of medium term sort of trend up three to 500 points, right? That's, that's where I can see them going over the coming weeks. Like the Aussie dollar up towards 82, Euro up towards 125 at the very least, Sterling up to 143, Sterling, uh, Kiwi up to 75, like, 76 there's, there's like three to four 500 points here if we get weak cpi numbers now don't get me wrong this doesn't happen in one day right it's not going to go 300 points in a day but it will it will, it will confirm the downtrend of the dollar and that's what we've been looking for as we um you know each week we're sort of looking around going well where's the dollar direction it's up it's down it's this it's that and it ends up back in the range so just keep an eye on uh, on the updates as we get closer to the Wednesday CPI numbers. It's a real clear cut situation to me. Um, we've got a few Fed speakers this week as well, which will confirm or reaffirm the Fed's uh, position that the economy isn't quite ready for, or is a long way from being ready from raising rates. We'll see how that goes. So at the moment, the sort of equity markets are uh, in a little bit of 
would say state of flux, but they're just sort of not really sure what's going on. Okay, equity futures, the equities themselves, but the treasuries, the yield is a little bit higher, right? You think that'd give us a bit of dollar strength, but not in this situation. Um, if anything, it's it's dollar down, okay, and the dollar block up. That's what we're looking for. So I, you'd think with interest rates on the sort of you know, looking at sort of, as I said, if we get really weak inflation numbers, you've got to expect the equity markets to be up. It's a risk on profile, the dollar block up and the dollar down. It is on for young and old. That's what you've got to be looking forward to. So that's in two days. What do you do up until then? Well, tune up your charts, look for opportunities. Uh, if you're looking short term, yeah, by all means, have a, have a look around and see what's going on. But if you're smart, Right, you can see exactly that a lot of these pairs are miles away from anywhere. If anything, they're just near these these are longer term sort of trend lines. I thought I switched is miles away. The um, dollar yen's in the middle of nowhere. Dollar cad's miles away. Actually, if anything, you got to start drawing some uh, the, the new resistance trend lines. Get those into your charts and start planning your trade around the potential opportunity. What this US CPI on Wednesday is going to do for us. Uh, it, um, it's, it's a really big play. As I said, I, I can see if we get, imagine if we got really weak CPI numbers, you row up towards 127 over the coming weeks, he's not out of the realm, right? Market's still short. Um, I, I think it's just one of those things. And that would be my, my ideal situation. Sorry, just as I go through and update a few um, support trend lines here on the dollar block pairs, the Kiwi one needs to be ad adjusted. Now, if, if anything, up until then, I'm looking to just looking to sell dollars on rallies, right? There's uh, not much of a point sort of getting uh, long dollars leading into this. So I just finished that last one. So you can sort of see where the dollar index is. We've got this, um, the last little sort of support level back at 90.35. Now, the, it has come a fair way, right? The dollar index from 90.90 or 91 down to 90.20. You can see it's sort of stalling here. That is going to act as resistance, but... It's almost like it, I don't know, but it's, it's got two days, another two days or three days for it to hold before it goes, before we see some sort of correction. I don't know if that's a, that's a good place to be getting short ahead of the numbers, but start planning for the opportunity because this is where your trading will really come into play. You come down and have a look through the data. So I just want to highlight the, um, the Canadian numbers. Okay, really uh, much weaker numbers across the board. So that's uh, weaker participation there as well. So that's, Normal market conditions with, with a neutral to strong dollar, dollar CAD's up 150 points, but as it is, it's uh, sitting back there on its knees. Aussie retail sales figures, pretty much as expected. So the, the moves here are coming from the dollar. So when you come down through the calendar and you start sort of piecing it together, a lot of GDP, a lot of um, UK data, I should say, GDP, one of them. Uh, keep an eye on this Wednesday data. It is the key to the next potentially the next two, three weeks of trading, right? All we want is weaker numbers and that's that's going to put the cat amongst the pigeons, right? We get stronger numbers, it, the currency's correct back into the range and it becomes a little bit boring again. And that's where we are, guys. It's, uh, as I said, rushing into the non-farms can be hazardous. We sometimes get a much clearer picture of the overall spectrum of the um, US economy after that data. And with the US CPI numbers coming up, it's the perfect backdrop for a uh, good trading opportunity. All right, guys, all the best this week. Cheerio.